So, today we're talking about hyperbolas. Um, it's our last new learning for the unit. Both tomorrow and Wednesday will be review days. And then Thursday is our test. Now, um, as I was saying to some of you, if we do what we did on Friday, if we could do ellipses, we should be able to do hyperbolas. It's a little more um, drawing involved, I guess you could say. But the main premise is going to stay the same. We're still going to get four points, and then we'll go from there. So like I said, today we're talking about hyperbolas, talking about vertices, and talking about graphing them. A hyperbola is a conic section that consists of two vertices and asymptotes. Now, ours are going to look a little different than these pictures. Ours will have boxes drawn on them as well. Um, but that's the basic graph. So the, the actual graph of it are these blue lines here. Those are the hyperbolas. You'll notice they have a vertice. Like I said, we'll find vertices. And then when they go, when we draw them, they get really, really close to asymptotes. What are asymptotes? You remember? We talked about it. Not this unit, but like in this year we have. An asymptote is an imaginary line that our graph never crosses. So when we were talking about like exponential functions and log functions and graphing them, we'd say it always got really close to those lines, but they never actually crossed. So when we draw our asymptotes on, that is basically just to guide us when we're drawing our graphs in there as well. All right? So an asymptote is just a line that your graph will not cross. The actual hyperbolas are just these blue lines here. We're going to have a lot of stuff on the graphs for hyperbolas, but it's going to be a lot of dashed lines because we're not actually including that in our graph. Okay? They're basically guidelines for us when we're drawing. So, the equation looks very similar to an ellipse, except it uses subtraction. So, it's still equal to 1. They still have different denominators, but now we have subtraction instead of addition between them. So, that's how we can tell the difference between the ellipse and hyperbola, is if you look at the equation, and there's subtraction in there instead of addition. Now, with the ellipses, we said a squared was always the biggest number, correct? With hyperbolas, a squared is always the first number. And that's also how we tell which way hyperbola opens. Is if x squared comes first, it's going to open left and right, just like you go on the x-axis, left and right. All right? We'll have vertices then of negative a0 and a0 with our x values. There are no co-vertices with hyperbolas because we don't have any other parts that we touch. The only we're touching here is our vertices. If the y value comes first, it's going to open up and down, like you would go on the y-axis. So our graph's going to open up and down if y value is first. Notice our a squared is still the first term. It can be the smaller number. That will happen. Um, but it's whatever term comes first. Okay? Vertice will be 0, negative a, and 0, a. Okay. So graphing is similar to new lips, like I said before. We're still going to plot those four points we plot with an ellipse, except we're not going to draw a circle. So, first of all, I've got to figure out, is this going to open left and right or up and down? So which value comes first, x squared or y squared? x squared. So because x squared comes first, I move left and right on the x-axis, it's going to open left and right. x squared comes first, opens left and right. Okay? Then I'm going to find A and B and make my box. So A squared is the first one. B squared is the second one with hyperbolas. If A squared is 16, A is going to be? 4. If B squared is 4, B is going to be? 2. two. Okay. So just like you did with ellipses, I'm going to look. A squared is under x. So from my origin, I'm going 4 left and 4 right, putting points. Right? A is 4, so I'm going 4 left and 4 right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. B squared is under Y, so I'm going up and down 2. Now, normally you would draw on your ellipse, right? That's what you did on Friday or on your homework today if you did it really late. We noticed there. Instead of that, we're going to draw in a box, a dashed line box. That goes through all of our points. We do that because we're going to draw the asymptotes using our straight edge through the corners of our box. So it's going to be 
we'll go with this one and make a different color. Okay. So using your straight edge through the corners of your box, you should draw two dashed lines. Those are asymptotes. Those are the lines we're going to use to help us draw our hyperbolas. Now, if you draw them in as solid lines, yes, they'll get marked wrong. It's not technically part of our graph. That's so why we have to use dashed lines. All right? So those are our asymptotes. The next thing I'm going to do, I know it says find the vertex, but I'm actually, I'm going to draw it in first before I do that, okay? So, we said it opens which way? Left and right or up and down? Left and right. So that tells me I'm going to use these two when I'm drawing my hyperbolas. And what's going to happen is I'm just going to draw lines going towards the asymptotes but not crossing them. I'm basically drawing two parabolas, two things for our last unit that get really close to the asymptotes and keep going. All right? Do they have to be perfect? No. Can they come back and cross each other? Absolutely not. Um, do your best, right? It's an estimation. And these red lines are actually our hyperbolas, okay? Which means my vertices are those two points that I started at. Well, what were those two points? Well, negative 4, 0, and 4, 0. Right? Our vertices will always be, will always come from that first term. Right? A was 4, and because it's under x, it's negative 4, 0, and 4, 0. Okay, does that make sense? Do we have any questions on it? I mean, that's a better way to ask that. Okay? We'll do one more together quick. Okay? Let's look at our next one. y squared over 4 minus x squared over 16 equals 1. First of all, before I start graphing it, how do I know it's going to be hyperbola? It's got subtraction, right? Subtraction, the denominators are different, it's equal to 1. Well, I need to know, is it going to open left and right or up and down? Well, which, which term comes first, x squared or y squared? Y. Which way do I move on a y-axis? Up and down. So it's going to open up and down. Okay? Then we're going to find a and b and make our box. Remember, a squared is always our first term. b squared is always our second term. If a squared is 4, a is going to be 2. two. Underneath y squared, we're moving up and down 2. Okay. B squared is 16. B is going to equal 4. It is under x squared, so I'm going 4 left and 4 right. And then I'm making my box. Once I've made my box, taking my straight edge and I'm drawing diagonals right through the corners to make my asymptotes. Asymptotes do extend forever, but we're more worried about like the hyperbolas. So I would say no, you don't need arrows at the end. I like to put them just because I know they go on forever, but I'll not mark it all. Okay? And then we said it opens up and down. So I'm using the top and bottom points. And I'm drawing lines that get really close to my asymptotes. Guys, our hyperbola should never cross those asymptotes we draw. Right? They're going to get really, 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 really close to them, but they should not cross. Okay? So I'm looking. Last thing I want to know is the vertices. What are the two points I started at? So 0, 2, and 0, 
negative 2. Alright? Are there any questions on that, guys? Okay. Comfortable enough to do maybe one or two on our own? Yes. Okay. So try the next one. We'll go through it, and then we'll talk about the one after that. If you have questions, please make sure you ask them. The square has to be dashed, yep. <laughs> so guys, here's that first one. Double check it, see how you did, let me know if we have questions. Right. If you have not already, please try the second one. Guys, were there any questions on that first one? Do we need more time to do the second one still? <coughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, keep working then. Give me maybe another minute or two. Is that enough? Yeah, 
there's a button there I can't see yeah. something. Yeah. One second, AJ. Yeah, it's like. What's up, AJ? Quit hitting each other. I'm gonna hit you. Box correctly, make sure the awesome tilts are good. Okay, any questions on that second one? Anything at all? How partially will you be grading like the arrow here? Like, how close? Like, you can see, like, this, it kind of starts going away a little bit. That's fine. Now, if you draw them on here and they're like this. That's going to get marked wrong. Right? Maybe make an effort to keep them close to our asymptotes. Okay. Last one for today. Equations will not always look so simple. If I ask you to graph this, hey, pay attention, because we don't like this on the homework. If I ask you to graph that, can you graph it in its current state? No. No. Why not? It's not equal to 1. How can I make it equal to 1? Divide by 40. Divide by 40. Once I divide by 40, it should reduce to 1 over 4 and 1 over 5. And now I can go ahead and graph it if I'd so choose. All right? Um, one other problem on the homework is to be a little different. So when I hand it out, please flip it over and look at number 6. Swipe up, subscribe, like, and comment.